so you can see that some of the stuff, the Azure repo uses my personal user and the Microsoft, my personal Microsoft repo uses my personal, no, my private, I'm tired. Hey everybody, it's been a while. Um, I don't post much these days on social media, neither on uh, Twitter, I refuse to call it X, or on YouTube, but I do read your comments. And um, recently I thought about one of the comments from about two weeks ago from One Day A Week who asked, in a video a while back, you showed that you use a hardware solution to manage your GPG keys. Can you make a video on what that hardware device is and how I set it up. So as I said, there is this uh, blog article which you can go through and I'll link it in the description. Um, what will be useful is all the commands, right? And so at some point, the first time I did this, I just wrote it in a readme doc and I formulated more for a blog post now so you can see exactly what commands to use and how to do it. Um, I think I wrote this article as well because I needed to suddenly revive the Microsoft key. And I had the issue of juggling multiple keys um, because I have multiple identities on GitHub. So um, I'm not gonna go through this in detail. You can read it. What I'm gonna do is actually just on the fly show you how I use it, which uh, can go, you know, as live demos do, maybe good, maybe bad. Okay, so before we get started, which keys am I using? I'm using keys from Yubico and I have two of them. So I have a USB-C one and a USB-A, I think that's what these are called. Um, and that's because this was originally bought for the computer that I got from Microsoft, which at the time didn't have USB-C. Okay, so let's go to GitHub. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna sign in. So if I click the sign in button, I have one password. This is going to use the fingerprint on my Mac. So I'm gonna sign in here and I do have multi-factor set up. So as soon as, wait a minute, do I have any open USB-C ports? I do. Okay, so as, as soon as I click this, Right, it's gonna say all these different things. I could use my phone, but my favorite is actually just to pop this in here. And I don't have to click on this piece. I can just tap it and then it will log me in. Um, I find it much easier than opening the app and I have like 10 million like uh, those one-time use codes and I have to pick it out. So I prefer actually just the USB-C key or the fingerprint thing on the Mac. Um, okay, so now we're logged in. Why do I use these keys in my Git workflow? I'm gonna click on this one because it's a public repo. And if I click on the list of commits, what you'll see here in the GitHub UI is that it's verified that I actually made that commit. And the way that works is that these keys, they um, have a private key on them, right? And keys come in pairs, private and public. So what I do is I sign my commits with the private key that is on the Yubi key and GitHub has my public key. So if you click on the verified, what it will say is that the commit was signed um, by my signature. And that basically means that um, if somebody tries to sign a commit with my name and email address, it'll show up as unverified um, because I've asked GitHub to do that. Whoops, and it's showing that um, I was it was signed with this particular key. So if we go into GitHub, where is it? I think it's in settings. Uh, here we go, GPG keys. So you'll see that I have a few. One of them already expired, but basically what you do is that the keys are associated with an email, so they'll also verify the email address. Yes, my work email is on there. Don't email me if I, in case I forget to blur this out because I barely answer my colleagues' emails. So yeah. Mm. Anywho, um, so this is added here. They only have the public key. They do not have the private key. Those are always on my devices. And yeah, so here you go. You have here like the vigilante mode. Um, how do you pronounce that? And so unsigned commits as unverified, right? So if it's not mine, don't do it. Um, if I find a screenshot, there was a case like ages ago where somebody impersonated Linus Torvalds um, and deleted like some, I don't know, pff, Linux repository. 
Um, and that's actually pretty easy, pretty easy to do if you know how Git works. So let's take a quick look at that. Okay, let's step back and let me draw out the crazy thing that I was trying to do while I'm really tired. It's Friday. Okay, so let's say this is Julie, not NG, it's gonna be OG. And then I have another Julie here, which is MS for Microsoft. So I have two UB keys. Now, GitHub has its own identity provider, right? And so this account is something that I've had for like ever 10 plus years. Now, since I joined Microsoft, um, Microsoft also has what they called an enterprise managed user. And so in our no longer called Azure Active Directory, but whatever, it's synced. So basically I have two personalities with two different accounts and two different email addresses. Now, when in the video, when I make commits in two different repositories, Right, so let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> so let's say I have one repo here. Let's say this is a Microsoft repository. And then let's say this is a, you know, a private Julie repository, a personal repository. Um, wow, the camera's really struggling to autofocus if I look down, okay. Um, so I'm gonna take key number one, right? Uh, let me do a US one, which is going to be the um, OG Julie, and then I have key number two, which is the Microsoft Julie. So when I sign my commits, this happens locally on my computer, right? It does not happen on GitHub. So I make my commits, maybe I'm on an airplane or whatever, um, I get off the flight and then I push them to GitHub. And so let's just say this identity provider is going to be attached to github.com. It has its APIs, and then that's exactly what we're going to do, is we do a push. And let me take another color. So for these APIs, you need to authenticate, right? So it works via, or the way I'm authentic authenticating to Git is via HTTP. And um, there are various ways to do it, right? What I do is I take advantage of something called an et net RC file, which is on my computer. Now, the thing is you will not find any .NET RC file, which would be plain text on my computer. You would find a .NET RC .gpg, which is encrypted. So at the point later where I get confused, why is it that I make a Microsoft commit? and then I have to plug this in to push. It's because if I want to push to github.com, that netrc file is encrypted with this key. So I always need to take this personal key to push anything to github.com. Okay, now uh, I'll let you get to the video and maybe it's less confusing than this. Okay, let's see how I use this. Now, um, as I mentioned, I have everything configured in a dot files like repository. So every shell kind of loads that. Um, I've emptied it right now because it shows what accounts I'm logged into on Azure and stuff. So all you see is the little blue tilde. Uh, what I am going to do is go to a repo that right now is a side project and it's called AKS Cheat Sheets. Um, and this is using the Z jumper. So description, um, link in the description below. And I actually have here, you know, what I'm going to do, um, it's already synced. So let me just do, uh, YouTube demo. And then what I'm going to do is just, um, reset a few of the commits. So now I have to commit all of this, um, on a new branch. So I'm just gonna be lazy and add all of them. Now, what you will see is it's going to ask me to, I'm gonna take this out. It's gonna ask me to insert this key. And so I have a shortcut. I'm just gonna say, I usually write much better commits, but I'm just gonna say demo. And now it's gonna say, insert this key, which I will do. And I hit enter and there's a pin. Of course, bad pin. Try again. Uh, 
type slow. Okay, so this means that if somebody steals my, you know, my keys, um, they don't have immediate access to it. So there's a pin both to use it, there's also a pin to access the admin uh, tool to change pins and keys and all that other stuff on it. So now that I've done that, um, one important thing to know actually, and actually let me just show that now there is a file um, in my home directory that's not checked into the dot .files GitHub repo because there's too much like personal stuff in there. Um, in case I forget to fuzzy out my work stuff, don't email me because <laughs> I barely answer my emails if you're uh, my colleague. So um, anyway, what you'll see here is that um, I've configured my user Globally, it's also all the commits are signed. And also I've unset the credential helper from the Mac OS X keychain. I'm not sure if that's necessary anymore, um, but sometimes, yeah, machines try to be too clever or maybe I'm trying to be too clever and I wanna undo something. So let me get out of this. Um, and I have that new commit, which I haven't pushed yet. And actually if I not lazy, git push, um, U stands for set upstream. So I'm just gonna do origin YT demo. And now it's going to ask for the, um, the pin again. And this is because this is the net RC helper, right? So this is not Git, this is net RC that is using this. And net RC is what is being used to um, uh, hold all the credentials that I have um, for anything, whether it's GitHub or Heroku. There's a few other things in there, but those are the two biggest ones that I use. Um, okay, so that was done. Let's go to a, another repo, the Microsoft repo. Okay, the Microsoft repo. Um, this was called Cloud Insights. And actually this has stuff that I haven't committed yet, which is what I can see here with the exclamation point. Um, how old is this? So oh, many weeks old. Um, let's just see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new branch then. Um, what is it that I did? Oh, I started something for filtering. Yeah. Um, and then I'm actually going to check out a branch and I'm gonna call it work in progress. Or I can just call it whip um, filters, something like that. And then I will just already add it. So actually I can just say commit. Um, well, let's say demo committing work in progress code. Am I brainy working? So now it wants a different key, right? So unplug this, find a dongle so I can use old school USB. Uh, plug that in, hit enter. Uh, yes, allow the accessory to connect. And then now, um, I remember. Woo. Okay. So now that one did a commit. And one of the things then if you look at, so if I do git show, what you'll see is that um, it's signed, well, it's authored by me and it will also be signed. Um, I can't show this in GitHub interface because it's my Microsoft account. But yeah, maybe I'll show that with the other user. Uh, let me push this. I'll do the same thing. Set the upstream and whip filters. And this one, oh, that's the other card number. This will be funny. Does this, I forget what I have to do. I think I have to take out this one and then add this one back. And then I think this will fail. No, it worked. No. Oh. It's late. <laughs> All 
All right, I'm gonna close out this video now. It was a bit messy, but I wanna get back into the rhythm of actually just posting regularly. Um, I think it's um, going to be key as I get back into the group of things. So for everyone who's been posting really encouraging comments in the YouTube comments, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I do read all of them. So pardon that this is less polished. Um, I'm gonna try to actually then take you guys along as I'm building a couple things. So this AKS cheat sheets, for example. Um, and I was thinking of actually, I need to build something or try to build something. And I was gonna maybe try to, I was going to maybe actually try to do pair programming with GitHub Copilot um, to see how that goes. Um, let me know if you'd be interested in that. So thank you to um, you guys who watched all the way to the end and I hope you have an awesome weekend. Thanks, bye.